Looking at our digital color wheel assignment, we have a couple uh, of our color systems here, and we want to focus on the center one here, the additive system. You know, in our last assignment, we worked on the traditional system. You know, and as we talked about in assignment one, you know, this is the subtractive system, which is basically what's in our printers. So kind of looking at the colors here, you know, we have to figure out our transitions. And, you know, there's a couple ways to go about doing this, but, you know, the key here is to make sure that all our primary and secondary um, colors are included in the color wheel. And we can talk about that a little bit more in the assignment. But this, for the example, you know, the, you have to use a minimum of 24 different colors. You know, the color wheel is 360 degrees, so divided by 24 gives you your transitions of 15. I have another example here, but again, we can talk about that more. And they're all based off of, you know, the color wheel being a circle. So, you know, if you're unfamiliar with where the locations are, go ahead and grab yourself a protractor to look at somewhere. And we can kind of find these, you know, red being 360, green being 120, and blue being 240 down here. So switching back, we can go ahead and look at this on the assignment. You know, and that's kind of roughly where they are here. You know, this is not a perfect example. It's just an example. So, you know, first color we want to look at here is our red. So we can see in our RGB values that red is entirely red, fully saturated. It would be 255, no green or no blue added. And we can switch over to our HSB sliders and see that, you know, that's the case that the red is fully saturated. So something like, you know, when we're looking at these colors and if we're unsure of what we're kind of making, we can do this in RGB and it's very much like mixing our paint in a way. So, you know, if we want to add, you know, to make this a yellow, we can add uh, a fully saturated green and we can see that it switches to yellow. And then when we switch back to our HSP sliders, we can see that yellow is identified as hue 60. You know, we talked about the hues a little bit last week, but now we're going to kind of go in depth in identifying which ones are which. So kind of going back, you know, one thing we, you know, we can look at this assignment when evaluating and writing your critiques, if there's values in all three of these, say we put a value in here, we can see that we've now changed the saturation. And what we essentially did in this case is created a tint. Now to kind of do the opposite of that, if we lowered both of these values, we could create a shade. So let's go ahead and do, <coughs> and there we go, we have a shade of our yellow. So so that now there's a, there's a little kind of key that you kind of have to make check here is that even if one value is 255, which we're meant, identifies that it's full red, but the other one is lowered, that's not necessarily a shade. And that's where we start to build our transitions. And we can see here that that's hue 46. So, you know, which would be our kind of yellow orange, you know, orange being hue 30 in this case. You notice how, you know, if you're familiar with the paint system that, you know, in this case, our secondary hue was orange. In this case, our you know, in our additive system, yellow is our secondary. Orange is kind of pushed back here into a tertiary position. You know, this range is kind of tightened up. So, you know, it's something to look at when you're looking at these values. It'll help you if you're unsure about when you're making your transitions. You can do them all in HSB. This kind of helps identify, you know, what you're looking at when you look at an RGB. You know, it can be a little clearer at times. So going back to our HSB, as we discussed last week for, you know, our uh, gradation of hue, the S and B values both have to be at 100%. That designates our full saturation. We kind of talked about how we can see it in RGB. So this shouldn't be, uh, you know, too complicated in any case. You know, something we do, we can look at is go ahead and take a look at the assignment. Now when thinking about the design, you know, there, notice here how the primary and secondary colors are both are the same size and that helps isolate them visually. Now preferably I'd like to see do the primaries as one size or shape, secondaries as a different one, and then transition the tertiaries however you want. You know, come up with a theme, think about what you're going to do. You know, you know, it being Halloween, you know, people may want to do pumpkins and bats and, and do something kind of creative and, and show, but connect it visually to the transitions of hue. You know, making the primaries the most dominant object, secondaries following, tertiaries, you know, behind that. And, you know, we can kind of talk about this a little bit more, but this should help get you started if you had any questions or if you had trouble with the gradation of hue assignment from last week. So let me know where we're at and hope this helps.